Hello, internet and musical world, possibly DJs at this point, since we're sort of venturing into that territory. Have a review of a piece of gear that I've owned now for probably about a year and a half. Um, picked it up when we got started programming our own lights. Uh, DMXs by NTech. Um, this seems to be the pretty standard kind of unit that most people kind of default with. Obviously, NTech has other offerings, and there's other companies. Um, but uh, this is the one that I picked up. It seemed to be the most common one. It seemed to be the most sort of user friendly. Um, I knew absolutely nothing about lighting, uh, you know, programming, any of this kind of crap, you know, two years ago and started getting into it um, really out of necessity with uh, with our cover band stuff that we were doing, you know, started realizing, you know, venues are asking us to bring lighting and then you realize, hey, you're just throwing up that, you know, Chauve cheese ball, hundred dollar DJ bank looks like crap and how do we make this looks better, look better and then, you know, that worked its way into what we do here with a minor error. So, um, with High Five, we roll with a very big setup. We've got very big, very big for us, at least we're growing compared to other bands. Uh, I guess we're small, but uh, we're kind of medium sized, I guess I'll say. On a shoestring budget, we do pretty good. Um, so, our big rig consists of three uh, par 40, what am I, par 64s, flat pars. Uh, we use uh, four Martin MX4 scanners, two Chauve strobes, uh, those all go on our 15 foot truss. And then we have um, a light box that our singer Matt built in the, uh, the cover world of things in High Five, um, which has two flat par 36s in it. Um, and then we also use, how many pars do we use now? I can't even remember. I think it's four, four, yeah, it's four uh, big, kind of big par things at all. I'll do a video on our on our light gear eventually. Um, and all of that is rigged up and it goes daisy chain, just one DMX cable into the into one device into the next. It all gets run off our laptop uh, and this is the interface that sends that MIDI out into the world. So if you don't know anything about lighting, I'll probably do a series of videos of everything that I've learned, how I program, kind of my philosophy, uh, my take on it, and then you can decide if I suck at it or not or whatever. But um, So DMX, this is really cool. It basically is a, the software part of it is um, just kind of like an old school looking light board, which is basically a bunch of faders that you would move up and down that do different things, um, that your device will tell you what, you know, however many channels, some of them have like different, you know, five channel mode, seven channel mode, um, and they give you more or less control of that particular device and whatever it might do. For the most part, like the PARS, it just changes the color fades them up and down. Uh, most of your devices are red, uh, green, and blue, and then you fade those together to get different colors like purple or orange or yellow. Um, so DMX just kind of runs all of that. This has been a very sturdy interface. It's well made. It's very well made. Um, taking it all over the East Coast at this point, played hundreds of gigs with it. It's very reliable. A couple little funny things about it though. Uh, ran into some problems. If you get some sort of a voltage surge or some sort of a voltage thing happens, um, since I've got a bunch of, you know, with our keyboard gear all hooked up with our computer, sometimes DMX just gets kicked offline and you have to unplug it and replug it back in. That can be a little weird. Just says it can't see the device. Now, it hasn't damaged it. And it doesn't happen that often, and I think from what I was reading, the DMX's device itself has some um, some protection built in to avoid any possible problems, um, you know, frying itself or whatever. So it's been reliable in at least that kind of way, and it hasn't been a big deal when it's happened. Just quickly unplug the USB and plug it back in, and you're good to go. Um, a couple other weird things. In the Macintosh world of things, if you're using a Mac, there's some sort of a driver. It's called FTDI or something like that. Every time I do a software update, DMX does not work and you have to run. And, and Entech supplies the software, which is great. Um, so thank you, but you have to run this thing that disables this driver that then allows DMX to run. It's unbelievably frustrating. Um, because it could be the littlest update. It could be like an iTunes update that comes out. All of a sudden, it doesn't work. So I just keep that thing on our computer, and I just run it when I do, but it just annoys me uh, to no end when that happens. Um, 
As far as the software itself, why don't I pull it up and I'll show you guys a little bit around around it and uh, and how I uh, how I use it and how I program it.